Hi guys, back with another video. This is going to be another one of my Catch Clean Cook videos. This one, I'm just going to use a bunch of different clips filmed throughout the season to put this video together. As you probably already know, I'm very new to waterfowl hunting. Got a lot to learn, but I did manage to get myself a couple geese this year. I went out several times. Most times I didn't even see a goose, but I did manage to put a couple on the ground. Alright, so now for the cleaning part. As you can see, we had a pretty good day today. We got a Canada goose and a mallard duck. So I'm going to do a catch clean cook on each one of these. So I think the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do the goose. Get it out of the way. I got it the first thing this morning. So we're just going to breast this thing. As you can tell, I cleaned that goose quite a while ago. So I've been keeping these goose breasts in the freezer. They've been in there for a while. It's time to get them out and do something with them. So what I'm going to do first is trim all the fat off these breasts. Now, some people take it a step farther. Most people do. They, they get the silver skin off of it. I don't do that. I mean, I guess it's personal preference. It does make the meat extra chewy, the jerky will be extra chewy. I guess one of the good things with that is, is if you offer somebody a piece of your jerky and they have to chew it too much, maybe they won't like that and you won't have to give them another piece. You get to keep it for yourself. I'm just kidding. But anyways, I'm going to work on these, get them all sliced up, and then we'll do the next step. So the next step, we need to weigh how much meat we have. This is the important part. You know, you need to know how much meat you actually have so that you could get the spices measured right. So we're going to be putting it in a bowl. So the first thing we need to do is we need to measure how much the bowl weighs. So we got the weight of the bowl. Now let's add the meat and see how much all the meat weighs. Going to have several pounds of it. You know what, might have to put it in here first and then weigh it so that it'll balance. Got a good bit here, it's pretty heavy. Four point four four minus the six four. So we got slightly under four pounds. So it'll be about three point eight pounds, somewhere around there. But that'll be what we'll use. We use about three, three and three quarter pounds. That's what we'll go with when we mix our spices. So now it's time to mix up our seasoning. Now one of my favorite, all time favorite jerky seasoning comes from a box. It's called High Mountain Jerky. It's the cracked pepper and garlic flavor. They make several different flavors, but that cracked pepper and garlic is my absolute favorite. So here's the deal. I don't have any of that. So I'm going to try something a little bit different here, and I think it's going to come out just as good. Picked this up at a store a long time ago. It's called garlic pepper. It was in the spice aisle at a food store. I haven't been able to find any more of it. And I got some of this quick cure salt. 
So we're going to use this to replace the seasoning that would be in the high mountain jerky box, the cure when you buy it in a box. If you haven't tried that flavor yet, try it. I guarantee if you like garlic, you're going to like that flavor. So what I did was, I kept a couple things from my empty box. I kept the, you know, the recipe where it tells you how much seasoning to mix for how much meat you have. And I kept the little sprinkle jar. That will come in handy. So what we got to do now is we know how much meat we have. We have to look on the little chart and see how much seasoning we're going to need. Now when you look at the, the chart, they tell you how much seasoning to use for muscle meat or for ground meat, for ground burger. We're going to be using the recipe they call for for the muscle meat. So we said we had about three and three quarters pounds. So we could see... What we got there for the three pounds it tells you how much to mix so then we'll just use we'll do slightly less than the one pound what they recommend so it's going to be a little tricky but we'll try to get it close and that'll be our next step so for the three pounds we want one tablespoon and one and a half teaspoons that's for three pounds of meat so for the one pound they're telling you one and a half teaspoons. So we'll just do one teaspoon. I think that would get us close to three, what, you know, three quarters of a pound. So we'll try that. It's building a little bit extra in there, but it, it'll still be good. Kind of some good stuff. Now I do have some of the cure that High Mountain puts in their packets. I have some of that left over, but I'm going to try the quick cure salt. I believe it's pretty much the same stuff, and we're just going to go by that. We'll use this, so it'll just be a homebrew recipe in the end, based off High Mountain's recipe. And I'm telling you what, when you look at this stuff, it looks exactly like the seasoning that comes in the, you know, in your box for the High Mountain. And I believe it tastes pretty much the same. I've used this on burgers and steaks and stuff. It has the same flavors, pretty much. I could even read the ingredients garlic, black pepper, salt, brown sugar, onion, canola oil, red bell pepper, gum, garlic oil, parsley. So basically you could probably mix up some of your own stuff if you can't find it exactly like this in the store. So next we're going to mix up the cure. Three pounds is two tablespoons. Try to level them off. One tablespoon. Two tablespoons. And for one pound of meat, it's two teaspoons. So we're going to use one and a half teaspoons. One teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. So that ought to be pretty close to what you would get when you buy it in a box. We're using the same recipe. You could probably use the same, I'm just guessing, if you mixed up your own recipe of seasoning, you could probably use the same measurements that they recommend. I'm curious if they're all the same, you know, whether you get the hickory flavor, or teriyaki, whatever. I'm curious if they'd all be the same. I'm going to mix it up, put a little bit of a couple of chunks in there. I'm going to mix it up and put it in this salt shaker because that's what we're going to use sprinkled onto the meat. So next, we want to season the meat. So what we're going to do is lay it all out on the cookie sheet here. Sometimes if you could wipe off a countertop and put it on there, it would probably be a lot easier. But we're just going to use this. Lay it all out, season it up a little bit. What we're going to do is try to get both sides. So you're going to lay it on one side, sprinkle some seasoning stuff on it, lay it on the other side, and add some more.
All right, so we got it all seasoned. So now we're going to use the rest of it. One there. Smells garlicky, I can tell you that much. We got it all in there. Each piece should be coated up pretty good with the seasoning and the cure. So the next step is we're going to let this stuff sit overnight and then we'll work on it again tomorrow. We'll get it on the trays and then we'll dry it out in the oven. So here we are the next day. We've got our meat. It's been marinating. I guess you'd call it marinating and all the spices overnight. It's probably been I guess probably about 18, 20 hours or so. So now what we got to do is we got to put it on these racks. We've got different trays here. So we're going to spread this out, put it on, try to keep a little bit of space between them. I notice some of these pieces are a little thicker than I thought they were, but I think they'll be all right. We'll just have to leave them go. We have our oven preset. So now what we want to do, we want to put it in the oven. we need to do is we need to keep some kind of utensil or something to keep the door from going all the way closed. We want a little bit of a gap there that lets the moisture out. So we're going to have it in there. We'll keep an eye on it. I'm guessing it's going to take four, maybe five hours. So about every hour what we'll do is we'll rotate the trays around, take the ones that are on the bottom, put them on the top, just move them around so that everything dries evenly. So now all we do basically is just wait. So they're done. All right, so here we are. We got out of the oven. It's still warm, still real warm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a piece of it. And I'll give you my thoughts. This is with that homemade seasoning. I tried to imitate the cracked pepper and garlic seasoning from High Mountain. So we're going to see if it, how it compares to that. I mean, I've had that a lot of times, so we'll try this. It's good, but I'll admit that the box seasoning tastes better. The cracked pepper and garlic has more of a garlic flavor than what this does. But this is good. I mean, it's not going to last very long. I'll have it ate up in no time. But if I were you, I would get the seasoning from uh, High Mountain. I think it's a lot better. But here it is. This is the goose jerky I made with my catch, clean, and cook video from Goose Season. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.